Okay, so let's draw from Jesus' supply, practical, everyday needs. Let's get how to do this right now. Number one, you gotta take the vision. You gotta take the Jesus vision. Jesus simply said, don't send them away, you feed them. That's the vision. Jesus will often give us a word or a directive that seems impossible, but you start with the vision and the mission that God gives you. Remember with God, all things are possible, but you must get your eyes full of his vision. See it, don't look away, but see the need. Number two, take inventory. Jesus asked them in Mark 6 account, well, what do we have? Notice the disciples answer here, we have nothing here except five loaves and two fish. It was kind of pejorative. These guys were established in not having and being not havers and good at slanting the report with a not haver emphasis and attitude. They had an attitude about the little of food. Well, this is all we got. In life, you have to learn to take inventory of what you have. Don't be dishonest. Don't exaggerate either way. God who legally owns everything is interested in your ability to steward. So if he gives you a little, he's not as much interested in the quantity as he is in the quality of your regard for it. Are you dismissive? Are you scornful of the little? Do you despise the pennies, the little opportunities? Well, that's only five loaves and two fish. Well, that's all it is. The people who you think are insignificant and can't promote your cause, do you feel that way toward them? The first step in the PBR principle is perceive. Taking inventory is recognizing, but it's also having respect for the seed, no matter how small it is. Celebrating what God has already entrusted to you, even if it's only five loaves and two fish which is a perfect setup for this next step. After you take inventory, which is part two, look at what Jesus said for them to do. Take it to God. That's what he said in verse 18. Bring them here to me. You take it to God. If you knew God would multiply all the good stuff that you have, then don't you think that you would be quick to bring everything to him? When you have a great vision and a tiny bit of provision, you've got a big choice here. Either you hoard your five loaves and your bread and despise the, the impossibility of the dream that'll never happen, or you bring it all to God and let him help you multiply it. Practically speaking, how do we translate this action? How do we take it to God? You see, in, in the Mark 6 account of this story, Jesus praised God for the supply and gave thanks as he broke and divided up the bread. Jesus lifted it up to heaven and he blessed it and he valued it before God. He thanked God for these five loaves and two fish. What are you thankful for today? See, that's having. Now, number four, take action. Jesus told the disciples to have everybody sit on the grass in anticipation of supply. Mark 6. That account says he specifically told them to sit in ranks of hundreds and fifties like a garden. That's organization. Jesus instructed them to get a plan going and bring some order to the situation. Look, a miracle is about to happen. And yet once again, Jesus is telling them to act on what they can do, what they do have, where they are, not where they wish they could be or what they wish they had. Take action on Jesus' words with what you do have, not what you don't. Jesus didn't tell them to take out a loan. I'm not saying that a loan is bad, but Jesus was about to amplify what they had, not what they didn't have. You have got to be a haver on this step. God multiplies what you have, and that goes to how well you've learned the art of perceiving, believing, receiving. Let me remind you at this point, Jesus always told the people that he healed, he said this, your faith has made you whole. He said, your faith has healed you, saved you, restored you. All these people received because they were havers. They had perceived, believed, and received. Not because they were good people, righteous people, or pretty people. Not because they had fame, money, or fortunes, or influence. They were havers. And number five, take up the harvest. Look, you're not done. Don't just stay in the sandwich stage. Don't just get your miracle, wipe your mouth, and go on your way in your life. We've got too many Christians who think the conference was the goal. Life is the goal, my friend. Living the abundant life in Christ is the goal. His glory is the goal, and the win is not in the miracle sandwich. God is always outcome-minded, stewardship-minded. What did you do with the little he entrusted to you? Did you just eat it all? No, no, no. The secret to glorifying God is the many baskets that you pick up after the miraculous feeding. God is no problem multiplying the bread. The real variable here is, are you willing to fill those harvest baskets full?